So it's a register for names, right? It's a simple way for you to take maybe a complex name and simplify it. There's scarcity to that, so you can't have the same name as me. It always points to something in the name value fair. Can anyone tell me what's here in the upper left hand corner? Does anybody remember that? Phone book. Yellow pages. So about 10 years after the telephone came out, uh, there was a name service. It was the yellow pages, right? It basically had names and had phone numbers. Because not everybody can remember a phone number. It's difficult, right? But you can remember names. It's one of the most important words in the English language is somebody's name. And of course, everyone's familiar with the canonical version of the name service. That's uh, TNS. Instead of you having to remember an IP address, you just remember Google.com, and it resolves to the IP address, so you can go to the website. And now, everybody has a name service on their phone. Instead of you having to remember all these phone numbers, you have all the names on your phone, that's a name service, right? But when we talk about the history of name services, it's, it's quite interesting. And actually, can, can anyone tell me where this screenshot comes from? What, what web page is that? Now you might kind of date yourself by answering this question, but that's okay. Multitasking here. Uh, yes. Bitcoin talk. Bitcoin talk. Thank you, sir. True OGs. So, uh, actually, with a show of hands, who here has actually posted on Bitcoin talk? Either started a thread, right there we have one, right there we have one, or, or commented. Wow, so only three out of the room? Okay. Those are the true OGs, by the way. If you posted on Bitcoin talk, you've been in the space for a long time. So, you know, when we talk about the history of name services, they actually, it, it actually started with Satoshi. Um, the story goes that Satoshi basically went to uh, register Bitcoin.org. He couldn't do that. He or she couldn't do that. Or they. And, you know, he basically, or they basically ended up using uh, gift cards as an anonymous way to register those names. And Satoshi actually proposed uh, what a name service would look like from a decentralized token perspective. You know, the quote was that, hey, you know, in addition to mining 50 bitcoins per week, you can get a couple of free domain names as part of it. Which is, hey, you know, 50 bitcoins a week is not enough. Now it's like one or two million dollars per week. Um, but as part of that, uh, you know, basically the proposal was is that we can have these name value pairs for domain names as part of um, the Bitcoin blockchain. And so there were folks in Bitcoin talk, they actually looked at it and said, you know, that's probably not going to scale. And so they created their own token or their, their own protocol, which was Namecoin. Can anyone tell me an interesting fact about Namecoin? Who's heard of Namecoin before? Anybody? Right there? Okay. Anyone know any interesting facts about Namecoin? First ICO. Not the, uh, maybe. I, you're, you're close, you're really close, and that, that could be correct, actually. Anybody else? The first altcoin ever was Namecoin. So when we talk about name services, the first altcoin ever created, which, I don't know if this is like, uh, bad to say Sui's also an alt altcoin too, right? <laughs> but, um, the first altcoin ever was Namecoin, and so when they proposed it, they basically said we're going to use a shared proof of work with Bitcoin. We're going to allow folks to, to mint Namecoins, and they're going to basically uh, mint it and have that name value pair as part of the token. It cost about a dollar and it expired after 200 days. And the key kind of use case or product was that you can have a dot .bit domain name, an extension to TLD or top level domain. And it was censorship resistant, right? So, so right now, all of DNS is controlled by, by a centralized organization called ICANN, where they can determine who can and who can't have a website. Now, as part of that proposal, they said, hey, we're going to attach this name value pair to a coin, to the token on the name coin network. Now, can anyone tell me what happens when you take a discrete discrete value with a discrete name value pair and you attach it to a coin or a token, what happens to that coin or token? What was that? I, I heard it, yes. It's no longer fungible, right? What happens when a token is no longer fungible? It becomes an NFT. 
So not only from a name service perspective was Namecoin the first altcoin, Namecoin was the first implementation of an NFT. Pretty darn cool, right? Now, I, for folks that know the history, I, I might get some arguments here because there was also colored coins that came out before Namecoin, that was on the Bitcoin blockchain. That's a debate to be had because you know, colored coins have semi-fungibility. <clears throat> What's interesting about the first NFT on Namecoin was that uh, it was actually created by two gentlemen, Kevin McCoy and Neil Dash. They created, uh, so, so Kevin's wife uh, took a video clip and basically attached it to one of the, the tokens on the Namecoin network. They called it Quantum, and that was you know, about 2014, 2015, the first NFT ever created. At least that's what we know historically perspective. You know, is Paul here actually? I think I saw Paul. Uh, maybe you left her. Oh, there you are. So I, I actually thought of you when I was reading up on the history of this, because um, I know you've been playing around with names. Like, what do we call an NFT? They actually, back in 2015, they called it monetized graphics. Good name, maybe. So, um, and it's very interesting. They, uh, you know, it, it actually sold for 1.5 million dollars at Sotheby's in 2021. It's pretty cool for just shooting a video clip, right? And actually, even more interesting, someone swooped in because it was expired. They took the coin before it sold on Sotheby's, and now there's some lawsuits going on. Who, who actually has ownership of that first NFT? So, very interesting history when it comes to name services in general. So, you know, again, when we looked, when we went to build out CNS, we wanted to look at the landscape of name services, we wanted to look at the history, we want to learn from others, right? And if you look at Namecoin in general, um, they've had a really tough time being successful. There was a study in 2015 that basically said, out of 128,000 names that were registered, only about 28 were actually being used or resolving to an actual website. And it wasn't because Namecoin wasn't being used, right? There was still a lot of secondary uh, transactions, people selling, there was still mining happening on the Namecoin protocol. But, you know, the challenge was a couple of things. Number one, from an ease of use perspective, Namecoin was quite difficult to use. It had a very heavy wallet that took hours to load. Um, there was no tutorials, right? Uh, the team was great, but they spent a lot of their time focusing on low-level features and not on the ease of use, the adoptability, right? Especially if you're trying to pull folks away from a Web2 platform, you gotta make it easy to use. Not everybody's a cryptocurrency expert like we are here, right? Um, and name squatters, right? As I mentioned earlier, it's, you know, uh, $1 to register a name, and it was quite easy for folks to come in and mine and just get all the nice names, all the great names in the platform, and then just basically sit on them and sell them on the secondary market. In this case, the secondary market was Bitcoin Top, by the way. Um, so, you know, so we looked at Namecoin, we looked at the other name services, which, by the way, we have great respect for the other name services, you know, ENS, uh, Salon Name Service from Lumpia, uh, .bnd from Space ID, you know, and we looked at the landscape, but we felt that there was a fundamental piece missing when it came to ease of use and, and combating name squatting, right? And so for our platform, we're doing something unique. What sets Sui and S apart and how we're different is that we're not just the .sui name service. Now, everyone knows the .sui name service is on the Sui blockchain. That allows you to represent yourself really like the other name services are being used today. I mean, for the most part, name services today have been adopted as a Web3 username. That's how you identify yourself. That's how you come to your wallet ID. And we have that same capability as well, though we are having a kind of gaining focus that we'll talk about a little bit later. But you can still send and receive tokens to a simple name, you don't have to memorize the wallet ID. But what we found is there, there needs to be a clear delineation between users in the community and their wallet addresses, and companies, organizations, and projects, and the assets that they own on the Sweet blockchain. And so that's where .move comes in. So just like .sui is for users and it points to wallet IDs, 
Dot move is for companies, projects, and organizations, and it points to the assets they own on the blockchain, whether it's NFT collections or tokens. And so let's take an example of this. And so this is where I'm going to ask folks to get a little bit of an arm work out here. Okay, so, so be honest and raise your hand if this applies to you. Um, so I want everyone to raise your hand if you have ever minted an NFT or interacted with a DeFi contract where your own money was at stake. You're, you're going to use your own money to do that. I'm thinking that pretty much everybody in this room has done something like that. Now keep your hand raised. Sorry, this is where you're going to get that armor back. Keep your hand raised. Only lower your hand if before you interacted with this contract for the first time that you're going to use your hard-earned money on, you actually went in and checked if the contract is correct, if it's the right contract ID. Okay, so you guys didn't check that. Keep your hand raised. Now only lower your hand if before you interacted with that contract, you always check if it's audited. You go and you find the audit contract and make sure it's audited. Or you go and you check the team if they're docs. Or you check the information about them, right? Not that many people do that. So if you have your hands still raised, you are what's considered uh, a degen, or de <laughs> degenerate in the cryptocurrency world, right? You just get to the website and you mint the NFT or you swap your tokens. And so what we built here with this use case, which uh, shout out to Keepsake and Ethos Wallet for, for the UI and also for integrating with our services, is that at the time that you come to the website, number one, you're going to actually see the company that's registered that contract. Because it's, it's hard to remember the contract ID. Am I, am I using the right contract ID or has there been a front end attack? Front end attack means that the website's been hacked and they switched out the contract with somebody's going to drain your tokens. Or, or maybe one of the employees that the company's gone on road and, and they've switched the contract and that's going to drain your tokens as well. But in addition to preventing the front end attack or making it harder to actually occur, we're doing a number of things. So number one, inside of the wallet UIs, which the SUNY name services integrate with all the wallets in the SUNY ecosystem, you can go and you can actually see if that contract's been verified. And verification here means that we, working with Web2 providers for, for anonymous projects, we actually look at, do they own the Twitter account? Do they own the website? Do they own the email? Right? And so you can say, this person that owns this Twitter account, who owns this contract, has verified themselves to this specific contract. We're also looking at analytics. So when you go and look at a contract, you can actually, you can discern things about the contract. You can look at the transactions and say, is this contract actually minting NFTs? Is this contract stealing all the tokens from every wallet that connects to it? Right? And so in layman's terms, in simple human readable format, in that .move profile on the CNS website, we will have that information for users. Right at the time before you're going to use your hard-earned money to interact with this contract, you can make an informed decision about who I want to actually interact with this contract. Is it doing what I think it's going to do? And the last one is audits. So it's um, quite cumbersome to actually find an audit. I don't know if, again, I was having one raise your hand, so like you go to make that NFT, and then let's say you're, you're being good. Hey, I'm going to find out if this has been audited. Finding the actual audit is difficult. Who did the audit? Where is it? Is it posted on the website? Is it on their Twitter? Do I have to go to their Discord and ask somebody, has this been audited? Where's the audit? We were actually talking to uh, one of the top auditing companies uh, on blockchain, and I won't mention who, but I asked him this question, do you guys look for an audit before you mint NFTs? No, we just mint it. Right? Uh, and so we're gonna have a streamlined, right, as you're about to mint that NFT, we've partnered with the audit companies to get programmatic access where we can look up in real time to see, has this contract ID been audited? And furthermore, we can do smart things. We can actually look at when did the audit occur and has the contract changed? Has the contract been updated since the audit occurred? And we can provide that information for you as well. <clears throat> so some features about CNS again, you know, our vision, our goal is to create a simple and safe platform for blockchain for the community to use. Our name service is complete. We're focusing now on some of the other features. We get profiles and we're continuing to expand those. So 
you can look someone up and you can look at you know, what games they're playing, you can have a friends list if you own the dog suite name. We partner with Ego Swallowed and Clutchy, for example. Uh, they have games on chain. And so having a leaderboard where you can see the high scores is, is a great place. You can come straight to Sweet NS and you can see all of the different uh, games that are being played, the high scores and achievements. We, you know, stolen or, or borrowed some of the concepts from Web2, so we have uh, ML models with recommendation engines. If you can't get the .sui name that you're looking for, we'll make suggestions, and it's smart. It actually understands some of the terminology in crypto. We built SUI ID so that we allow you to connect Web2 to Web3. You don't have to have an extension in your browser or a specific browser that knows how to resolve the .sui name. We actually own the SUI.ID DNS property, and in real time we're mapping. So if you own Sean.sui, which please don't register Sean.sui, I'd like to get that name if you can. Um, you can just basically have that point to a wallet or an IP address website, and then you can say, hey mom, go to sean.sui.id on your phone or on your browser, and we'll automatically map that to the Web3 property. We made mobile and emojis a first class citizen. You know, when we looked at other name services, we saw that uh, emojis in general were proliferating. It's a great way to uh, express your individuality, and so we made it really easy to use from a UI perspective. When we talk about a new service, and so let's talk a little bit about the mainnet option. How am I on time? Is the timer's not. You're good. I'm good? Yeah. Alright. Okay, so, um, so what we're building now, uh, what we've been working on for the past month or so, is uh, building an auction platform. So when Sweet goes live on the mainnet, you're not going to just be able to swoop in really fast and maybe no one's watching and get Sean out sweet. You're going to have to go into an auction. And as part of the auction, we're doing a couple of things. Number one, it's a blind auction, right? So you don't know any of the names that anyone's bid on. You don't know how much they're bidding on it. It's a second price auction, just like eBay. So in a sense, we don't want people competing on prices, right? We want um, what ends up happening basically if you use eBay is Someone has a bid for ten dollars as the top bid, and you put a bid in for fifteen dollars. It's not that the bid is not fifteen dollars; it's you know ten dollars and twenty-five cents. So it really encourages folks to bid what they feel is the value of the name that they're trying to purchase. We built a time-based element into the auction itself, right? So uh, this is to combat the name squatters. Either people that come in really early and try to grab the name before anyone else, or or more frankly, bots, right? Um, what we saw happen with other main services is folks built a lot of bots, which by the way, you know, we've seen on our site, there already have bots. Folks on DevNet are hitting us with bots already, so they're getting ready. Um, and, and so the time-based element basically says, you know, number one, for the first month of, of Sweet Main Net, we're going to have the option period for .Sweet. And for you to get a name, you have to basically come to the website, you have to start an auction for the name that you want. After you start an auction, it'll be a 24 hour waiting period. Oh, okay, cool, thank you. Uh, there'll be a 24 hour waiting period, and so um, you'll basically come in, you'll come back after that 24 hour waiting period, it'll be a bidding period. Anyone can come in, they can bid on the name. That bidding period lasts for three days, right? So it's giving folks time to maybe look up if the name is in bidding process, if it's already been taken. After those three days, you'll go through a reveal period. Remember that all of this is secret, it's encrypted by a secret passphrase that the user provides. And so we have no way to actually see it, no one else has any way to see it. And so there's a reveal period, so you have to come back and actually reveal your bid. Out of the top bids that are revealed, the one with the highest uh, will win that option. And then you'll get your name. Um, you know, when we when we look at auctions um, on other blockchains, one of the, we wanted to make sure we got a blind auction, obviously, for the reasons I stated. Um, but we wanted to you know, bring that ease of use. And then what we've seen in practice with other blind options is, if you lose your secret passphrase or something happens, you actually lose those funds because the funds are being held in the contract. Um, and so one of the you know areas that we've improved upon is, you know, if you lose your secret passphrase or something happens. As long as you retain ownership of the wallet that made the bid and sent the funds to the contract, 
you'll be able to get your funds back. That was something that's very important for us that you know people can't potentially lose money in this auction because life happens, right? Okay. Um, so I think we're okay to do a demo. I guess uh, how much time do you have left? Yeah, about seven minutes. Okay, cool. So that gives me enough time now. Um, disclaimer: We were up late last night and early this morning uh, <laughs> trying to get this demo working, and I know it's a little bit brave to uh, to try to do this demo, especially in front of all these builders, right? So, so go easy on me here. But uh, let's see if we can get this to work, and I can show you a little bit more about the UI, which we're quite proud of, um, and also make some of the features of the site. Oh, and I don't have internet access. So I've been tethering into my phone, so let's just do that real quick. My, uh, is it uh, going to show this? Yeah, once you're ready. Oh, once I'm ready? Yeah, okay, ready. cool. Yeah. I appreciate that, guys. Give me a little hair cover here. Okay, um, I am ready. Oh, cool. Nice. All right. Um, so this is actually our staging site. So if you go to silliness.io, um, you'll see the main site. We have, uh, you know, the numbers are wrong here. We actually have about over 400,000 registrations that we've had since uh, we've been live on DevNet. You can see here we made a intuitive kind of fluid UI in terms of the platform itself. We have information about all the different partners that have integrated our service across the Suite ecosystem, so that's pretty cool if you get a chance to check them out. Some amazing builders. Um, you know, we take an approach. Uh, I love art. I think art is a great way to represent yourself and it kind of takes crypto to the next level because it integrates some of the culture aspects of, of humans, right? Um, and so we kind of showcase all the different art that we have on the platform here. Our team, amazing team. And then if we just go in here, connect the wallet, connect it, say sweet house. Go ahead and register that. So um, you can register for a number of years. We're going to have it uh, basically a static USD price, so it'll dynamically figure out how much sweet tokens you'll need to do that registration. So we'll keep the price static for the names. We've uh, added some anti-bot technology as part of the name registration, so no one can kind of swoop in and try to get the name as you're trying to get it first. So, uh, you know, not too fond of the two transactions here, but that's how we've implemented it currently. So we'll keep that. And some cool stuff that we've done recently, actually, if you guys have used the site before, um, we're starting to uh, use the art that the NFT collections we partnered with as part of uh, the domain name that you register. So you have an option here, you kind of get like random new art with each one of the registrations. We've uh, implemented dynamic stamping on top of the images. So at the time of the registration, uh, we're stamping it with the actual .sui name and we're stamping it with the expiration date, which uh, was a little bit actually difficult to implement because we want to make sure that the, the service stays online even if our backends go down, so a couple of tricks that we did to make that work. You can go into each one of these names that you've registered. You can set it as your default if you have a number of names so that anytime your wallet ID comes up, they'll have a default name for it. And you know, I talked about uh, SUI ID as well. So a SUI ID for the names that you have, you can either have that point to the wallet address, you can have that point to an IPFS website. As I mentioned earlier, you can actually go in, you can say, hey mom, check it out. You can look at the crypto stuff I'm doing as well. We'll dynamically map that to a website from the Web2 property to the Web3 IPFS property. Uh, and some aspects of the leaderboards. So, you know, as, as games develop, we'll have additional leaderboards here, we'll have additional achievements. Right now it's a little bit sparse, but we're talking to uh, a number of the gaming developers in terms of integrating that, so there's a single pane of glass, you can actually see all the games throughout the suite blockchain as well. 
Okay, and um, that, I'll just leave it there for the demo. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the presentation and the demo. Um, we have a couple of minutes for questions. If you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer that. Sure. Anyone, anyone have a question before I finish? There you go. Uh, great demo. So, this analytics and this like access to audits yeah. that you're talking about, is that going to be available to other front ends via your web to that API or like, uh, how that process work? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, the first kind of iteration of it will be the .move profile on the CNS website. Um, you can come to the website and access that, but we'll also have a REST API. So if you look up the .move name using our REST API, you can actually look for those attributes because we're storing it as part of the profile with the .move name. So there'll be programmatic access to that. You know, one thing that I didn't mention as part of it is that um, not only are we doing analytics to look at the transactions of the contract and put them in human readable terms, we're also working with folks like MoveBit, which are uh, implementing new technologies to actually look at the, the byte code, just kind of like an antivirus looks at the code and says, hey, is this a potential malicious contract? And so we'll be integrating that feature set as well. Thanks for the question. Cool. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, you want to ask a question? Oh, 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 oh. Yes, over here. Here, I'm going to click in the back, please. By the way, a great presentation. Thank you. Uh, really interesting to see the demo. Yeah, just a quick clarification. So, uh, when it comes to the SUI ID, basically, we have to install a browser extension. Like, how does that work? No, so, so we own, um, we own SUI.ID, the Web2 DNS version. Oh, right, right. And then we're actually, in real time, when you set stuff on our website, we're going, we have a, a a gateway basically that transfers that subdomain of SUI ID over to the IDFS website or the wallet address. Okay. Is that, I think there's, I've seen others uh, in other ecosystems where you have to sort of like install a browser extension. Right. It's like a little bit clunky. And it, it I is. I think it was like a scalable solution, but I think this is. So. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, there, there is, I mean, I think that the closest version of this is maybe f.link or f.demo. I don't know how, how much folks follow what's happened there. Um, Last I remember, I thought Link, they like forgot to uh, renew it with ICANN, and then someone took it over, and now I think there's lawsuits there as well. Uh, so, so we'll make sure to register the SUNY.ID name for, for a good amount of time. <laughs>